security fences are back up on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., this time around the Supreme Court. Non-scalable fences which surrounded the Capitol after January 6th were erect around the Supreme Court building. Protests outside the Supreme Court are expected to intensify in anticipation of the official decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Capitol Police say that the fences are to protect the building during the protests. Police increase their presence around Capitol Hill and are using trucks to block streets leading to the Supreme Court. Protesters have been gathering since Monday when a draft opinion to overturn Roe v. Wade was leaked to the media. Democratic lawmakers, including Senator Elizabeth Warren, have joined the protest and delivered speeches outside of the court. While at Dinesh D'Souza's premiere of his new film, 2,000 Mules at Mar-a-Lago, we had a chance to speak to judge and current Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert over the significance of the Supreme Court leak and the potential long-lasting damage to the institution. Here's a look. Well, it has never happened in American history, so that should tell you something about how important it is. And then when you get down, the only motivation for leaking had to be to evoke protests, riots, threats to the judges that were going to vote in the majority. Uh, so when you realize somebody at the Supreme Court uh, was actually hoping to create enough havoc, havoc that it would intimidate other Supreme Court justices, uh, it is absolutely outrageous. And I know it violated ethics, and hopefully uh, there's a statute that's violated. And I know Merrick Garland uh, is out looking behind and under every rock and bush for a, a domestic terrorists, but we need to be protecting the Supreme Court justices from domestic terrorists. Uh, I don't know if Schumer will go back out there and threaten them, um, but it is important that the, the Supreme Court and the courts resolve our issues. That's what I was hoping to have done uh, before January 6th, uh, because that's what the courts were created for. Uh, but apparently the intimidation of the Democrats has worked in the past. Uh, it appears to have uh, caused Roberts to flip from voting to overturn Obamacare. So he's not one of the majority, the way I understand. I mean, that's the rumor. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. But we have got to uh, find the leaker. And unlike the FBI, when they find leakers in the FBI, uh, they promote them, reward them, give them more money. We can't keep doing that. Congressman, there's been so much distraction from the actual substance of Justice Alito's um, opinion. When it comes to the substance of it, I think a lot of people are getting, you know, emotion and talking points from mainstream media that this is taking away uh, women's rights and so on and so forth. When it comes to the Constitution and the rule of law, how on target was the opinion from your perspective? Well, from what I read, it was completely on target. It was a bullseye uh, because, as Alito's draft said, there, uh, uh, there is no right to abortion mentioned in the Constitution or the Bill of Rights or any amendment. So that was a total fabrication uh, from you know, shadow of a penumbra but it wasn't in the Constitution. And so, as the opinion pointed out, therefore, the intention of the Constitution was to leave those social decisions to the voters, to the individual states. And that's what many of us have been saying for a long, long time. That was not intended for some, you know, dictator at the Supreme Court. It was meant to be decided by the people in each state. Uh, same issue on marriage. That's not mentioned in the Constitution. So they went way out of bounds beyond the Constitution.
to rewrite the Constitution. So anyway, we'll see if uh, the intimidation efforts by the Democrats work. And I'm hoping and literally play, praying that it won't work. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is reacting to the Supreme Court's leaked draft opinion on Roe versus Wade. She spoke while visiting Washington State yesterday. But this is an assault on privacy. Who knows what's next? The recently leaked draft opinion has many Democrats concerned. Pelosi says that Democrats would need to pick up additional Senate seats in November to have enough votes to codify Roe v. Wade. And today, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said from the Senate floor that he will force a vote next week. Next week, the U.S. Senate is going to vote on legislation to codify a woman's right to seek an abortion into federal law. I intend to file cloture on this vital legislation Monday which would set up a vote for Wednesday. Republican lawmakers are pointing to the substance of the opinion, arguing that the basis for the decision is lawful and based on the Constitution. Pro-life groups this week are working to expose what appears to be five babies that were allegedly killed in an abortion procedure after partial birth. This happened at a DC abortion clinic back in March. A.J. Hurley is the director of Survivors of the Abortion Holocaust and is involved in this call to action. And today's Melina Wisecup had a chance to sit down with him. But before we show you the interview, please be aware that the footage you're about to watch is graphic and may be disturbing for some viewers. AJ, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me here. Could you explain what you guys are working on? Yeah, so uh, last month, a box of 115 babies was uh, found as disposed outside of an abortion clinic. Inside that box was five late-term, almost full-term gestation, full gestational age children, overwhelming evidence, prima facie evidence of uh, partial birth abortion and infanticide, which are federally illegal and we want an investigation and an autopsy. So why do you think it's important for this investigation to happen? I mean, we, we see those graphic images, yeah. and I, I think that a lot of people don't connect when they say, say that they support abortion, they a lot of times don't think that it could happen even in such a late term sure. as 35 weeks. Yeah. yeah, it's it's incredibly important not only to expose this, but to see the actual victim images, right? So like you said, people have been told and lied to for like the 50 years now that it's just a clump of cells, whereas we have released images of babies this big, me holding them, it, describing exactly what happened to them and babies, viable, pain-capable babies, all of which could have survived outside of the womb with little to zero help. And this is the uh, type of abortion extremism that is represented in America and in most, most extreme uh, fashion in states like D.C. and New York. So, AJ, that must have been really heartbreaking for you to actually hold those whole yeah. babies in your hands. Can you explain what that experience was like? You know, people ask me this question. All I can say is I don't think my psyche could fully grasp but what was happening. Um, it felt cold. It felt dark and demonic. My brain could not separate these precious image bearers of God, these precious children that I got to hold in my hands and the unspeakable depravity, not only in what who did this, but the legislators and the people that made this happen and let this happen every single day. It was wrapped up in one, and it was as if I was cold, holding a pure and unadulterated, precious display of depravity. Mm -hmm. Now, with that in mind, you mentioned to me uh, the other day that one of the things your organization is do doing is trying to resist the culture of death. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what does it mean? What does the culture of death mean yeah. and why is it important to resist it? Yeah, you know, what's unbelievable is, you know, even so I work with even pro progressives, far leftists, many people, even on the far left, resist any form of violence from uh, from the government, except when it comes to this. So for many people, uh, this 
a, a, ra- a rising movement of, of cultural uh, moment where we are now celebrating infanticide. I mean, we have several uh, states now, like California and DC, uh, not DC, Maryland and uh, Colorado now have whole bills that have perinatal clauses in them that you can uh, abort, basically uh, lead to the uh, the death of a child even after, several weeks after a uh, baby has been born and no civil or criminal crimes uh, are committed. And, and so, you know, this is nothing other than descriptive of a total whole-scale culture of death. And for many people, it's interesting that the only type of violence that they would hold to from the government is the systematic violence against the unborn. You know, and speaking about Justice for the Five, the group, and what the work that you guys are doing, we do know that there is there are progressives that you're working with, more mm-hmm. far people who are politically far left sure. in other areas, but they you you do unite on this fact, mm-hmm. which is quite interesting because it's very rare that you see conservatives joining with progressives yeah. for a certain cause. So I want to ask you about the politics. There's so much politics mm-hmm. around this. Do you think it's more of a political question or a values question? It's a values question. I mean, th- this has been politicized by them, not us. So I'm holding whole babies in my hands and anybody who tells me protecting a human being is a political matter and that I have politicized that, I would say you've incredibly lost your moral standing and we have lost our sanity, our ever loving minds in America to politicize the destruction and dismemberment of image bearers of God, human beings. And that is what's wrong with the cultural, political and moral climate of this country. Thank you for your time, AJ. Thank you. Senator Bernie Sanders, a self-proclaimed socialist, is calling to terminate contracts with companies who try to prevent their employees from forming unions. Sanders is the chairman of the Budget Committee and held a hearing on this today. He also took aim at Amazon's founder, Jeff Bezos. Take a look. Given all of your wealth, how much do you need? Why are you doing everything in your power, including breaking the law, to deny Amazon workers the right to join a union. Bezos did not attend the hearing. Senator Sanders is pushing the White House to end government contracts with Amazon and other corporations that are accused of being anti-union. Lindsey Graham, a Republican ranking member on the Budget Committee, fired back, saying this is an attempt of government overreach. Every time I turn around, you're having a hearing about anybody that makes money is bad. The government needs to grow beyond our ability to pay for it. This is a political process here. This is an effort to get an outcome you want using the United States Senate as your vehicle. This is very dangerous. Graham noted that there is already process in place to file complaints against companies if they feel that rights are being violated. Congressman Troy Niels is another member of Congress representing a border state district. We caught up with him when it comes to the rescinding of Title 42, and he tells us that his constituents are worried. Well, what my constituents in Texas 22nd and Christ, across the entire state and across the country are looking at Mayorkas, DHS Secretary Mayorkas, who's looking at the American people and saying to them, the border's closed, everything's under control. It's not. It's a crisis. And if you really are really serious about ending Title 42 here May 23rd, I would ask you to reverse, stop, pump the brakes, because we've had millions of people come through our southern border since Biden's been in office, and now with ending Title 42, you're going to have hundreds hundreds of thousands more every month. And it's got to stop. Where are all these people going? We do know that they're flying around to all the different states across our entire our country, and it's irresponsible. And, and quite honestly, I almost think it's criminal. I almost think it's criminal what they're doing, knowing the amount of drugs that are coming through and the human trafficking, the suffering that is taking place with these people coming through our southern border. It must stop. We must reverse course. There's statistics. The facts are out there. The fentanyl that's coming through is killing thousands and thousands of people. Absolutely. And if you really want to stop all of this, you secure the southern border. Listen, I was there for the inauguration January 20th. Biden's up there telling everybody he wants to work with his friends on the other side of the aisle. I see very little of it. What he had to do was just shut his mouth. He didn't have to do anything. Keep the remain in Mexico policy, right? Build the wall, and we would be a much safer place today. But no, 
this man, Joe Biden, hates Donald Trump so much, he was going to reverse that policy knowing, fully knowing, it was going to harm the American people. But he's never put the American people first. It's his ego and his attitude. Tech billionaire Elon Musk has secured fresh financing for his Twitter deal. A group of investors, including a Saudi prince and Oracle's co-founder, helped raise $7 billion. According to a new securities filing, Musk received commitment letters from 19 investors. The largest contribution was $1.9 billion coming from a Saudi prince who is currently one of Twitter's largest shareholders. Oracle co-founder Larry Ellison agreed to invest $1 billion.